Good morning, this is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another Film Fanatic show. It is uh, Friday at about 11.14. Hope everyone's doing good. It's a nice, uh, currently we're having a nice little snow, uh, snowfall, snowstorm. I don't know how much we're supposed to get, but we'll see. I have a, I have a gig tonight at, uh, or actually today, um, at the Camden Snow Bowl. So, it's funny because, you know, nobody likes to drive Plus, they absolutely don't, you know, absolutely have to drive in the snow. But we're playing at a snowball, the Camden Snowball. So they, that's their business, is that they want as much snow as they can get. But we'll do it. I think we'll be okay. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's not too bad at the roads. I remember last year I did a show there, and it was really crazy. Uh, it snowed a lot, and we ended up still doing the show. And, um, but it ended up working out. It ended up being fine. We just took it slow. So we'll see. We'll see how things go. Fingers crossed. But anyway, hope everyone's doing good. It's Friday. It's, uh, you know, uh, almost the end of January, which is just uh, crazy. So today's show is on a, on a, another music show. And I thought I had done a video on this band, but I realized I didn't. And I, I think I had recorded recorded it a while ago and then it somehow got deleted so I figured well I, I'm gonna just do it again and you know it's such an important part of my you know kind of my culmination of like where I where my life has gone and it was this band was such a huge part of that and I've been doing some cool music shows. I've been doing... I did a show on the Miles Davis Quintet, uh, which was a lot of fun to do. One of my most influential... For me, my heroes and my hero being Miles Davis and Tony Williams especially. I did a show on Suicide, which is one of my all-time favorite electronic groups. Uh, and also, I think at the end of the day, probably you know, the most important... Um, you know, group out there as far as in the, in the world of electronic music. Pi total pioneers. I did a show on Autechre, which is my favorite favorite um, electronic band and favorite band of all time. I did a show also, I believe, on Morbid Angel, which is my favorite favorite um, death metal band. I got to see them last year, and that was uh, phenomenal. I did a show on... A few other things and so I, I try to you know I try to I try to incorporate my love of music film they kind of it's all for me it's a it's a branch that's all like a part of the same tree basically I also did now that I think of it uh, I did a big show on the chemical brothers which is uh, you know electronic any an electronic group from the UK that is a you know huge influence on me, and have always, they've always been a big source of inspiration. So I did a big show on them. So I've been doing music shows uh, off and on for quite a bit, and I really love doing them. I love to try to mix up things, bring in some new things. I did a show also on Daft Punk. So today's show is on the one and only Kiss. So Kiss. Uh, you know, out of all of the bands and, you know, kind of musical connections connections that I have, that I had, you know, when I was a little kid to to now, probably, you know, really the longest uh, lineage, the longest history with, you know. And I, and I think, obviously, that story is the same for, you know, millions of other kids who, you know, discover music for the first time. Um, you know, or kids that are into comic books and what have you, you know, that's a pretty universal, um, there, I think in, in a lot of ways for, you know, especially American kids, but it's a pretty universal, uh, kind of experience. And I remember like Kiss was probably the first like rock band, um, you know, for that matter, heavy metal band that I ever got the first 
of their kind that I ever experienced as a kid. And it was a really crazy, you know, funny way to discover them. You know, I when I grew up, my brothers and sisters were really into Kiss. They had a lot of their their records. They were really into them. They grew up, you know, in the 70s. They were, you know, quite a bit older than me. So I was the young the young uh the young baby in the family. So they were already like teenagers in their 20s. And so they were into Kiss, but my sister was really into, you know, um, classic rock as well as my brother. And I remember, for me, it was like the first few bands I remember getting into were, you know, Kiss, obviously, which is today's show. And I'll, you know, really try to focus on that whole kind of experience today. Kiss, uh, Ozzy Osbourne. I got into Ozzy Osbourne before I got into Black Sabbath, which is kind of funny. I also was really into, um, you know, stuff that I just heard on the radio. But I have to say, like, Kiss, Ozzy Osbourne, you know, Judas Priest, uh, Iron Maiden, those were, like, the first bands, Motley Crue, the early Motley Crue stuff, uh, Shout at the Devil, those were, like, the first bands that I discovered as a kid. But Kiss was the very first one. And I was a little, little kid. I used to be uh, an avid comic book reader and, and buyer and collector. I was completely into comic books. I was, you know, in the habit of always going to this one store by our, our house where I grew up that had was a comic book shop. And we used to go there. My mom and I would always go there after work. She would, you know, we would go to... After she would get out of work, she would take me to Stout Steve's. It was a store that was close, and we would always, uh, I'd go in there, and they, I would always go through the comic book rack and buy all of these great comic books. You know, I was enamored with Batman, Iron Man, Captain America, all of the classic Marvel ones. But in the store, they had all of these great posters of Kiss, and so... And it was during, you know, their their kind of their heyday, you know, in the 70s. They were, they were like all these amazing pictures. And when I saw their 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 posters, I I it totally would it would blow my mind every time because, and especially the first time I ever experienced it because suddenly it was like from a kid's perspective, suddenly like these comic books that I, I was reading, these were like real life like superheroes. Because of the, the theatrical element. Uh, KISS was formed in 73 in New York City. By Paul Stanley. Gene Simmons. And Peter Chris and Ace Frehley. They um, were a, a pretty self-sufficient band. They pretty much did everything themselves for a long time. They really you know, worked their, their butts off to kind of build, uh, build their own world. They started off under under the name of Jester, and then they eventually had this concept of what could we do to, you know, do something unique that would separate us from the rest of the bands that were happening, you know, that were all the rest of the bands that were that were a, a part of that decade in the seventies. So they adapted the, these onstage personalities. Um, the Star Child, Paul Stanley, the Demon. Gene Simmons, the cat, Peter Chris, Ace Freely, the astronaut. They they adapted these larger, much larger than life personalities. So they started using costumes and putting on their own makeup and creating these, you know, wild stage shows with with you know huge light systems and smoke machines. And with the inception of Kiss, that's what they 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 started, and that really was <laughs> that whole package obviously was the thing that grabbed the the interest of the public and that's where it's what started you know kind of this phenomenon in some ways they were you know kind of the american version of the beatles in a lot of ways they they were a phenomenon and they were the first band that really got into kind of patenting 
um, their look and and making their their whole thing into you know basically uh, like a corporation where they had products and they they were in the art of selling that selling that you know capitalizing and selling works that were part of their brand they were like the first group that ever you know did that uh the first band that ever did that with merchandise you know and you had that with film also um you know george lucas with star wars very similar in nature where that became a big you know it was a phenomenon but it became um, um it was, it was one of the first times in the film industry where the whole like you know uh, having a brand and, and selling products around it so to to the point of where and also w w with what kiss did to the point of where it became a part of the american fa fabric uh the american you know became you know inch in stone in the american psyche you know as american as as uh, apple pie you know where everyone whether or not they were fans of them knew about them and so you know and they were doing this kind of work you know 50 years ago if not more so pretty wild the first way the the first time that i actually saw kiss or discovered them was on and again i was like i was probably like nine or ten years old about I would say yeah I would say about um, roughly about that age and where I grew up my grandmother lived right across the street from me and I grew up in New York and my grandmother lived right across the street from me and I used to go over there a lot and you know spend time with my grandparents and she had um, she had it was back in the time when you know all the house all households had cable she had at the time uh this really big it was one of the first kind of massive package deals that you could get with cable meaning that she had you know basically more channels and more options than we had at our house so i would go over there a lot and and uh hang out with them and we'd have dinner and i'd stay over there sometimes and one of the channels um that i used to watch and it was the channel that i discovered kiss on and and basically heavy metal music was this rel religious station and basically they had the special on there where they talked about these bands that were these rock these new rock bands that were you know promoting the power of satan and that they were you know promoting kind of the destruction of you know western civilization basically and that these bands were in league with the devil and that they were a representation of the devil on earth. And one of the bands that they showcased uh, showcased excessively and repeatedly was Kiss. And they even made claims that Kiss was, you know, or the, or the name of Kiss actually stood for Knights in Satan's Service. And they would show music videos of Kiss and they had interviews with them and all of their makeup. And, and I remember... I was just like, I couldn't believe it. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. And and it's one of those things when you're a kid, and it happens, you know, now, but if you're told, you know, you talk about like this taboo subject and you say, well, that that is, that's crossing a line, you know, you got to stay away from that or you shouldn't see that. That should be banned or taken off, you know, uh, just deleted completely. Your natural gravitation, especially when you're a kid, is okay, now I got to see that because my parents are saying it's bad. The, the, the authority figures in my life are saying it's bad and it's evil. So I need to see it. That's exactly what happened to me at that age when I was a kid, being even more impressionable and, um, you know, we're, and seeing these, and seeing Kiss, you know, and, uh, and they were larger than life. They were also during that time, and this was in the 80s, they were also during that time making you know lots of TV appearances. They were they were making music videos. They were also doing lots of television appearances. So they were really in the media a lot. They were performing on television, being interviewed. They were doing these massive tours. So it was you know they were really prolific. They were everywhere, 
And so after seeing that show, I went out and bought my first Kiss album, and it was a later Kiss album called Dynasty. And after that, I just became totally obsessed with them. And you know, the rest, the rest, for, uh, you know, for all intents and purpose and purposes, are you know, is uh, you know, um, history. But you know, it that influence of even more so than their music. I've always loved their music, but I think the the total package of Kiss or getting that Kiss experience is the the whole theatrical presentation, the whole aesthetic. You know, and I think their prime time, the best time that the best decade for for Kiss was the seventies. You know, they were in the height of their power, the height of their glory. Their their presentation, their stage shows, their the aesthetic, everything was the most bombastic. And they recently retired, um, but for many, many years, they um, performed. They also, obviously, in the in the late 80s, they, they did away with the makeup, and they transformed into more of a hard rock band, if you will. They didn't have the theatrical thing, and I did still love their music, it, but, you know, obviously it wasn't quite as magical without that presentation and then they started doing these big reunion tours or retirement tours which lasted for about 15 or 20 years and ever since since then the last almost 20 years they've been touring with their makeup again i never got the chance to see them i kind of regret that i had a chance to see see them uh it was about a year or two ago in bangor and i didn't go and i regret it because now they're they don't exist anymore so I got, um, it was probably about 10 years ago, I got this awesome KISS uh, DVD collection. And it's really amazing. It's, it's, it's got all of their TV performances. There's, how many discs are on this thing? It's a, it's a huge beast. I bought this huge uh, DVD set, which is uh, really, really awesome. I really want to watch this again. It's got two discs. Um, beautiful artwork. I don't have it on Blu-ray. It would be pretty sweet to get this on Blu-ray for obvious reasons. But this is, you know, pretty amazing. It captures the time, I feel like, the era of Kiss that, you know, where Kiss was at their best. It's from 1974 to 77. There's also two other editions of this, of, of you know, of this, uh, or of this kind of like retrospective packaging collection of the band, you know, late in the later decades. But this to me is the, the best, uh, their best period, uh, ever. They're at the height of their power. Um, it's, it's fantastic. There's all kinds of clips of them when they were on, uh, television throughout the years, throughout that decade. Their musical appearances, their interviews. There's the coolest thing is that there's two two full concerts uh, on on this set, where it's from the '70s, and there's one full concert of them playing in Japan, which is uh, amazing, really really good quality. And then there's another concert of them playing in Detroit, and and I believe they're both from like '76, '77, and they're it, again. Kiss is at the height of their power. They're like kings of the world. It's uh, it's amazing. It's it you know super fun, and I feel like you know it is watching this show and talking about it. This is like the reason, the very reason. Well, the you know probably the biggest, if not the main reason, I got into music or just got interested in music. Um. But just really ins inspiring, you know, as a little kid, seeing these comic book characters uh, come to life, the theatrical elements, you know, and and their whole kind of world, their whole like way of how they built their brand or the, the way they built their, you know, the aesthetics that they used to build their, to build the world has always, you know, to this day has had a major influence on me still. You know, with the various bands that I play in that are original bass, you know, that really was a the theatrical element that I was that I, you know where was directly influenced from Kiss. 
I was in a band, which was my first band I was ever in that was, you know, quote unquote, original bass. I was in a band for a long time that was called Full Contact Kitty. That was uh, kind of a noisy, you know, indie rock band. But we had a very theatrical element. We were influenced by lots of other things, you know, movies, obviously. David Lynch was a big, big influence on us you know, horror movies, all those things. But Kiss was also a major, major influence on on me personally, but then also the band, but m mainly me because we always had, well, we got further, further into it, but we always had uh, this presentation with our music, as you know, with the theatrical, there was always a theatrical element, you know, where we would use costumes, makeup, um, masks, uh, wigs, what have you. We always had some kind of theatrical thing in our shows. And again, that was a big, you know, musically the biggest influence for that was Kiss. And and then later on, another band I was in that was uh, on another all-original project that was my uh, band that I was in called Tit City. And again, the same thing with that, where that band was you know have kind of you know very theatrical in this presentation where we had makeup and and you know um costumes there was lots of shows that we did where i would always try to bring some kind of theatrical element and again huge kiss influence so and a big thing uh that same th well I, I should say that same thing continues very much so with my band Quantum, where, you know, with Quantum, I try to always have a theatrical element with that band, you know, and that's mostly through the use of, like, lighting and heavy use of masks and, and all those kinds of things, wigs and, and uh, you know, and, and all those things that that entails. And again, that was a huge, musically, I would say, you know, as far as that kind of, uh, taking that kind of a stance, that was that's that continues to be uh, influenced uh, by Kiss more than anything else, um, especially in the context of like a band. So you know, I. So you know, it continues right to this very day, uh, and you know, it's it's wild. It's it's like testimony to, you know, the power of you know rock and roll. You know, and it's and it's testimony to how powerful uh music can be and where you know it can literally you know again there's many i i have very very you know lots of different interests and there's lots of things when it comes to quantum there's lots of things that influence that band but i can always pinpoint you know very specific things that influence it you know all around the whole kind of scope of it and kisses that group and so it's uh it's wild that like you know being fortunate enough to have that experience and to have it where it's lasted you know an entire lifetime so you know i can never say anything bad about them because of that um you know i think without you know i've had a real kind of strange and unusual path in my life in a lot of ways but i'm also incredibly proud of those things and so i feel I, I sometimes think well if i didn't have that experience when i was a kid you know those things would probably be very very different if if they even existed at all so you know it's a, a huge amount of gratitude for that for that experience and for the band so say you know say what you will uh about kiss whether you like them or not whether you think people have or whether or not you think that they actually have, uh, you know, merit as a band or that they're actually a good rock band. But their overall thing is, you know, just, it was such an integral uh, part of my um, of my brain. So, so, and again, like this, this set that I bought is, is, is just uh, amazing. Like if you're a Kiss fan, this is it. This is like every time I watch this, it's like, I'm reminded of of why and like how I got into music 
Um, and especially with why I think of things and try to always think of things in the theatrical realm along with the the music. So, yeah, just so awesome. This is the best... Um, I think it's the best thing um, concert-wise, uh, video-wise, DVD-wise, Blu-ray-wise that is out on the market from uh, by KISS. Um, just amazing. So, thanks again. And we will see you next time. Peace.